Are we on? Sensors confirm live transmission. Oh man, we're on the air? How cue me! From the Galaxy Ballroom, high atop the stratosphere. Oh man, the tape! Just roll the tape! Good space dog. Beaming to you from absolutely anywhere. It's Kids World Sports. No boundaries, no limits, no rules. As the KWS Spy in the Sky grabs the action, the drama, and the heroics of kids sports as they're happening all over this wonderful blue planet. Tell them who we are, my robo-rapping MC. On the mic, your host, Twitch. I'm his artificially intelligent co-host, Hal. Almost as loyal as our cyber mascot, Hal Lord. It's all good on Kids World Sports. Oh, hey, hey there, sports fans. Just marking off the days until my summer vacation. Seasons tend to blur up here if you don't keep track. Ah, oh, summer. Meteor showers, total eclipses, long walks in space, summer romances. Did I ever... Right, pal. My perfect summer would be wall-to-wall -wall water skiing, like Aaron Milzinski's family in Ontario, Canada. Aaron has taken a run at a Canadian National Championship. Well, don't you want to hear about my first summer love? She was a water cooler. It's a peaceful morning in rural Ontario, Canada. Only the mournful cry of the loons breaks the tranquil stillness. Oh yeah, and the occasional motorboat. I'm Erin Milzinski, age 13, and I water ski. We're in Orangeville right now, and we're here because we're training at the site that's for the Nationals. What time are the other kids coming? Seven, I think. Probably late, though. For just Canada, this is the most important event. The Canadian National Championships is the mother of all water skiing events. Here, the top skiers in the country battle it out for position on Canada's national team. My water skiing goals are to make it to the Junior Worlds in the Worlds and to see water skiing in the Olympics. How many sets are you going to have today? Five, I think. Probably six. Six, I don't think so. I think Erin, if she works really hard and continues to do what she's doing, has a good chance to um, reach her goals. Erin has been water skiing for 11 years. She's earned top spot in over 50 competitions and holds the national record for the longest jump in her division. But it's not all sun and fun. Erin's a star winter skier as well racking up over 30 awards and wins in different racing competitions. I'm done. Erin is only one of 158 competitors who will compete in the National Water Skiing Championships. In this competition, skiers will compete in three different disciplines. Slalom, tricking, and jumping. Erin starts early, but not as early as her big sister Jenna, who will also compete tomorrow in a bid to defend her spot on the Canadian national team. Jenna is a tough act to follow. Last year, she won the nationals for women of all ages. Erin hopes to follow in her footsteps. Both sisters train with Jeff McClintock, a former national champ himself and one of the top water skiing coaches in the country. Uh, we start so early in the morning in order to get the best water, the glass calm water is the best to ski in. Training starts at seven in the morning and we try our darnest to be finished by five o'clock in the evening. Slalom is the fastest of the water skiing disciplines. Skiers race through six buoys at speeds of up to 55 kilometers per hour. Skiers continue doing runs, increasing the speed and shortening the rope until they fall or miss a buoy. Perfect time. Shorten up again to 12 meters. This one I was afraid of. Erin gets two buoys at 12 meters, her best run yet. She should have got three out of that one she did so well. Uh, she's heading on back to the dock. <laughs> that was actually a really good one. Best one I've seen you get. 
In water skiing, the training is intense, but so are the friendships. Aaron trains, competes, and practically lives with some of the best skiers in the country. These are my friends, William McClintock and Megan Collins. When we're not water skiing, we usually just like hang around or we talk about boys, <laughs> life, and skiing, but we usually try to avoid talking about skiing because we're always doing it. Can I show them how skinny I am? Yes. <laughs> We compete against each other, but sometimes one person will win, another person will win the next time, so it doesn't matter if you compete against your friend. We always hug each other for good luck before we go out in the water and before we compete. Usually they're good luck hugs. We like to think that. <laughs> like water skiing, because it's kind of like a family sport and you're around your friends all the time. But in Erin's case, it's a family sport, literally. Her mom, dad, and sister Jenna all water ski obsessively. Both Aaron and Jenna hit the H2O at an early age, developing a love for water, speed, and the need to succeed. Erin, she loves to live in Jenna's shadow. It helps to push her, and uh, she knows that if she works really hard, she can do very close to what Jenna has done, and maybe even in some instances do better. I think in some ways she looks up to me. I, ho I hope she looks up to me. There's times when we're competitive, but We've kind of realized as we've grown older, we're sisters and we just have to kind of cheer each other on and just see where we end up. Tricking is when you have 20 seconds to do as many tricks as you can, like spins and, and flips. I find tricking the hardest. You can lose it faster than everything else. With tricking practice behind her, Erin moves on to jumping. The most dangerous type of water skiing is probably jumping, but like, oh, it's just water. But really, it feels like you're falling on a brick wall or something. Sometimes I would get scared, but it's not enough to make you quit. 115 or 110 today? <laughs> Here we go. Jumping is Erin's specialty. She currently holds the national record in junior girls jumping at a whopping 115 feet, a record that was previously held by big sister Jenna. Wow. But 115 feet is not good enough for Erin. Wow. At tomorrow's competition, she wants to best her own record. probably about 115 feet. She'll set the record with that jump this weekend. With training over for the day, Aaron has a chance to chill. Tomorrow is day one of the championships and Aaron's big chance to qualify for the national team. I want to be on the national team because it's been my goal for a while and also I'll be able to be on the team with probably Whitney and maybe my sister even. I'm ready to kick some butt. Aaron flies for gold at the Canadian Nationals when we come back on Kids World Sports. It's daybreak in Orangeville, and the top skiers from across the country are pouring in for the Canadian National Water Skiing Championships. Competitors are gearing up for their chance to show they have what it takes to be on the national team. Right now I'm writing Be the Bear on my hand. I started in snow skiing because I always said be aggressive before we ski. I write it like this so that you can read all the words and that before I ski, I can get confidence. Be the bear. We're gonna get on down now. Okay, you have fun out there, okay? It's just like practice. Aaron blows the competition out of the water and meets all the other skiers with a score of two buoys at 12 meters. Aaron grabs the gold and even sets a new personal best. I've never gotten two buoys in a tournament, so I'm really happy. She won the slalom title by almost two full passes, so she's number one by a long shot. 
Next up, Aaron's specialty, jumping. But a picture-perfect day takes a dangerous turn as the winds whip up to speeds of over 20 kilometers per hour, Oops. wreaking havoc on the jumpers. This is a win where they would never practice in because it, there's too many dangers. Erin is very strong mentally. She's a tiger. She looks like a sweet little girl, but uh, underneath that, she's a real fighter. Get one solid so you feel what the yeah. wind's doing out there, and then go for it, okay? You worry, you just clap. This wind doesn't affect you. Erin has a great first jump, and it's good enough for first in her division, but it's not enough for Erin, who's looking to break her own record. Erin has only one jump left, and that means one last chance to beat her own national record. She's not happy about that one. That was a pretty good attempt. Erin had a little bit of problem compensating for the wind. The one-on-one's all right, but definitely not what she was looking for. Sabrina no. Bobo. 101 foot jump in these conditions is amazing. And uh, you know, I'm really proud of her and good for her. She won gold in, in jump, but she's still a little disappointed. She'll bounce back, no problem. She just needs a couple of minutes and she'll be right back to herself playing with her friends and she'll put this past her like, like that. first today, even though I, um, I jumped 101 feet, but, and I was looking for 120, but I can do it in another tournament. The following day, Aaron competes in tricking and ends up bringing home another goal. That's a sweep in all three events. Look out, national team, here comes Aaron. Be the bear. Hey, the switch stirs back to intro our next KWS story by way of word association, and the word is caveman. That would indicate an immediate family ancestry. <laughs> what if I add the word sport? Match comes up with speleology, the sport of cave exploring. That's right. Let's go underground with Maxime Renault of France, our 16-year-old spelunking sensation as he spends a night in the bedrock. Hmm, maybe you could join him? The countryside around Goudou, France is a beautiful place for a nice little walk. Except today, we'll be walking under it. These spelunking speleologists love to explore and discover new places. Hello, my name is Maxime. I'm 16 years old. I've been spelunking for four years. Maxime is a member of a speleology club. Every couple of weeks, they get together to plan their next adventure. This afternoon, I'm going to prepare the material to go underground. This is our main team. You know you'll be spending eight days underground and you won't be coming up. For us, this is the first time we'll be sleeping underground. The club is in training for a massive expedition they will be mounting in the cave network of Padirac. 
There, they will attempt to live in a dark, hostile underground for eight straight days. Well, we're off. First, we'll need some gear. Le plus important, uh, the most bottes, important items, gants, the boots, the gloves, and the jumpsuit, which has rope on one side tied with a carabiner. This holds everything. This is a crawl with the handle here. You remove the blocks, close this over the rope that fits in here. After, you climb by hoisting yourself with the pedal by making this movement. The helmet, which is here, has electric lighting. And here, you have the bomb where the carburetor goes, which you light with this and get a flame. Let's go to the hole. Caving is a very dangerous sport. It takes a lot of training and practice to learn the techniques that will keep the subterranean explorer safe. The Gudu Cave Network has over 16,000 meters of tunnels and in spots is over 120 meters deep. Before Maxime and his club can reach these tunnels, they must descend a sheer vertical drop of 35 meters. A mistake here can have nasty consequences. As soon as you're on the rope, it squeaks. You hear noises. Everyone is a little afraid the first time they go down on a rope. You're not very comfortable, but finally, you have to drop the drama and you succeed. I like to descend into the holes. I enjoy a certain risk. It's part of what I like about spelunking. It's kind of a human adventure. I've done it about 10 times or so. Each time when we discover a superb hole like this, it's a pleasure. As soon as the team arrives, they equip the hole. It's important that they do well on this overnight trip, because it's a dry run for their expedition in the Padurac Caves, where they'll spend not one, but seven nights underground. The Gudu Caves are made up of 16 kilometers of tunnels, and the only way to get through them safely is as a team. It's the thrill of discovery. There's a little bit of competition, as well as interesting scientific aspects, such as geological forms and fauna. Hold on. Just where are we anyway? So, here we have the topography. We're going to go down to a 35 meter hole here. We will follow a dry gallery with a pretty narrow area where each person has to go through on his stomach while lugging his equipment with him. And tight is right. Spelunking is not a sport for the claustrophobic. We've all had scary moments when we get stuck in a tight passage and we can't move. You just get pinned in and it's really easy to panic. One more squeeze and pop! They've made it to base camp, just in time for some much needed chow. Tonight, pasta with butter and cheese. The team has a big day tomorrow, so it's time to hit the hay. Good thing they brought their own. It's fantastic. It's the best. Absolute comfort. I'm really comfortable and warm. It's great. Let's hope they sleep well. Because before Maxime and his club can return to the surface tomorrow, they must negotiate a raging underground river. when we come back on Kids World Sports. Hey, Maxime, 10.30, you had said eight. 
Oh bah là c'était bien. On... It was great. The first Première night was euh... very impressive. Ça, It was very de... black and. Ça a tout noir mais. Euh... It was a little cold, but I have a good sleeping bag. The crew is finding it hard to get out of their nice warm sleeping bags and back into their cold wet gear. And it's gonna get a whole lot wetter. Water is a very unpredictable part of caving. This river runs for kilometers underground. It's cold, exhausting, and any rain at the surface can transform the subterranean waterway into a raging torrent. With the constant danger of flash floods, there's no time to relax here. There are moments when you feel like letting go. You're tired and you feel like stopping because it's exhausting. It's a different kind of place. It's very dark and cold, but you have to continue on. They're soaked to the bone and tired, but the team still needs to ascend 35 meters before they reach daylight. For me, the most difficult thing is climbing back up on the ropes. Once in winter, when I wanted to climb up, my hands were frozen and I couldn't move them. I really panicked. It took me a while before I was able to get up. I was really scared. They made it, a successful dress rehearsal for their eight-day expedition in the Paderak Caves. But the journey isn't over until all the gear is out of the hole. We're very happy when we test our limits and we've climbed out of the hole. We're so proud of the fact that we've explored yet another hole. Before we go, I thought I'd respond to some of the millions of emails we get here at Kids World Sports. Sensors indicate somewhat inflated totals. Wait, here's one. That lovable pup, Alloy, should have his own show where he plays a heroic space dog who combs the galaxy saving stranded bones? I don't think anyone would watch that. Join us next week on The Adventures of Alloy, the Action Dog, when he takes on the four-legged Cytrox of Planet Krylon. That's enough. This is Kids World Sports, not tossed in space. And returning as Alloy's faithful guide, Professor Pal. I think the lack of oxygen up here is starting to get to you guys. Maybe I could direct. <laughs>